Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. In today's video, I want to share with you how to create a very simple but effective user form. User form are used to collect data from people in a very structured way, so people don't mess up how you in, how they input the data, and they could be a very helpful tool for you when you're working with your Excel files. So, as you can see on my screen, I have. Um, an add new transaction form. This is going to be part of um, a bookkeeping for small business uh, video that I'm going to upload uh, very soon. And I wanted to just deep dive into how to create a user form. Uh, so I do it here, not in that video. If you're new to this channel, I am constantly uploading content about Excel and Google Sheets. So you're welcome to subscribe as to not miss new content. content. Okay, so let's take a look at the, this form. There's the headline, add new transaction. There's a date, and it's built in giving you the date of today. You have the amount, you have a type, which is a combo box, and you have a description. Now what's nice is that you can connect between combo boxes. If I select type income, I get these options. If I select type cogs, I get these options. And if I select expenses, and if I don't select anything, I don't have any options. Then I have two buttons, submit and cancel. So cancel just takes me out of the user form. Submit, if I don't fill out all the fields, I can get this pop-up message. Not all fields are filled out. Create transaction anyway. And if you give it a no, it just lets you input data. And if you give it a yes, it will create um, a line. What this submit button will eventually do is just take the, all the fields and populate them over here in a ready-made table for future work. So let's just show you how. Let's say I just give it something like this. And remarks, test, and I get a transaction added pop-up message. And you can see that information is here. If for some reason I put here a text, which is not a date, I would like to get this message input must be a date in the format month month day day year 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 so it doesn't live, give me the option to uh, submit okay so how is this built let's take a look in the um, uh, VBA visual basic area so the first step you have to do you go over here to the developer if you don't know how you just go over here or you can click on alt f11 um, you right click somewhere you click on insert user form that opens a screen like this and usually by default you also should get the toolbox which is this little thingy with the toolbox you have a lot of options to add um, I'll just show you what I used here and of course you can take it to the next level so I used mainly labels I used text box I used um, command buttons and I used um, com combo boxes. So th th those are the four elements that you will see in the video. Now when you click on each element you have the option to change a little bit what it says and how it looks. Caption is where you change the header so I can put date and you see date. I can change the color. Okay, I can give it a, a blue color. I can change the uh, internal color. I can do a lot of things. You need to, you can look into that. A lot of options. I like to use the categorized, not the alphabetical, because that really zeroes me in on what's important. If you go to font, which is important with the three dots, then you can change the font size, style, um, everything. Okay? So that's very basic is how you, you set this up. Now you can not set everything up without VBA coding, but I like to use VBA coding for a lot of things. So uh, let's go to, to here. If you right click on view code, you will see all the uh, VBA code that I have here to, to operate um, the user form. Now what you, you have to do is, 
um, first of all, have a part which is to initialize the user form, otherwise it will not appear. And that's what I have over here, which is user form initialize. Uh, I'm using uh, most of the time. Um, I'm decla declaring, declaring. Sorry, the uh, the parameters over here with option explicit, private, and just I put it over here because all of my different uh, functions will use the same the same parameters, so it's easier to do it this way. So I recommend that you do it that way. Then let's go to the initialize part. So um, I'm using the sheet called lists, and the sheet called lists is where I have um, all the drop downs that I use for the um, for the um, forms itself. So if I go to lists, um, here is where I change the header. You see, you can change the header of the user form. You can do it yourself. I mean, you can just change the header here in the caption. But I like to. I mean, I I, I used um, some coding because I had a different. I took some of this from a different file where I did use some coding. So here is where I declare the header. Here is how I set up the drop down list. So this is the, uh, the syntax combo box one, which is if you go to view object and you click once, you see here is how the, the, the I don't know how to call it even the, uh, the box or whatever. That's their property. That's how you can communicate with it. So here I'm saying to combo box one dot list equals list, which is just uh, it's the same name, so it's confusing, but that's the sheet where I have the drop downs. And I'm taking range A3, which is this, to the last line. Uh, to get to the last line, I'm using uh, find last row function, which is just list dot cells. Just, you can just copy that. It's just how you can reach the last row for a certain column. And then I get basically the the entire range. Then I want to uh, show the date of today. When you when you clicked here, you see that you get always the date of today. So I did that by um, text box one equals integer now. So now gives you a full date, including the time. I just wanted the date, so I'm using integer. And here's also just an example of how you can manipulate the user form within the VBA code. So for the button called submit, okay, if I go to the object, this button is called submit, okay, submit in the name, and this one is called cancel. So I have two buttons and uh, I just changed their uh, font and their uh, color for one of them. So you can do it once, you can do it here using the, um, um, the code. You can actually change it if, if things happen. So if someone does something in the in the form, you can only then change it to, to a certain color. So you can do a lot of nice things with the coding. So that's how the <coughs> the form is initialized. The next nice thing is that when you click on this button, there's a VBA code happening, which actually changes what your options here. And I want to show you how that's done. So it's called. Um, combo box one change. So when combo box one changes, what combo box is that box? It's a very simple um, you know, um, code that I have here. So I'm referencing, again, the sheets list. I want column. I'm using the match function just in like in normal Excel. I want to find the value that you put in combo box one. And I want to find that in row number two over, let me show you. Sorry. So in row number two, so it's very important that these names are the same because it's going to look for that name. So once I find that um, that value, I'm going to use that to find the last row in that column, just like I showed before with the last row uh, function. And then I'm going to assign the list to combo box two based on um, that column starting from number three, row number three, all the way to the last row. So basically, I'm always going to find whatever you select here and give you this range. <coughs> um, so that is how you can change. And you can do this for a lot of things. Once you're in the combo box change or the text box change or whatever, you can do a lot of things 
and, and change the form. Let's now talk about the buttons. I'll start with a simpler one. So if I click on cancel, I just close the user form. That's done with, with uh, this simple piece of code. So private sub cancel click. So you see it has the underscore click and just unload and the name of the user form. You can find it here. I changed the name. The default is user form 123 and I just change it to transaction so it's easier to identify. Um, the last part is the submit button. When you click on the submit button, and again, private sub submit underscore click. So first I'm um, application screen updating false. That's just a habit of mine to speed up the macro. You don't have to do it, but that just means that Excel won't um, you know, calculate and show you the results. So it just speeds up the function. I'm referencing, um, declaring that WS is a, is a sheet called transactions, and I'm looking for the last row in that because I want to basically copy the next row available. And this is where I check if the form was filled out properly. I'm uh, using a, a function that's called check form. This is over here. Um, basically what it does, it's something that I pulled online, to be honest. Uh, it just checks, it loops through your entire um, you know buttons and just checks how many are there and I'm returning that as a value so I'm getting that as a value and here I'm just checking if that value is less than four because remarks is a is an, an optional um, you know input but you can put whatever you want here so if it's below four um, only then I'm popping up this message if so I'm using a message box Great transaction anyway this is the font size and this is the details and then equals VBA you know then so basically this this line gives you the option to either continue or not continue if you decided to um, to um, stop then I'm just gonna re-update um, the screen updating because that's important for the the rest of the file and I'm gonna exit the uh, the entire function close close the form. Um, otherwise, I'm just continuing. <clears throat> then I'm going to check if the date is inputted correctly. So I'm checking, I'm using is date for the text box one value. And if it's not the case, I'm going to give you that message input must be a date in the format and exit uh, this. Assuming all is well, I'm just going to copy the, the transaction to the table. So you see I'm referencing column A in the last row. B, C, D, E, so basically last row, and each time I'm going to cycle through and look for the value in each box or combo box and just assign them to the last row. Then I'm just going to close the user form with unload transaction, give that pop-up message transaction added, refresh the pivot tables because in the future I'm going to connect this to pivot tables, and apply screen updating so it's back to normal. So that was it. It's uh, it's pretty basic, but you can start with this and you can really improve and do a lot of nice things with user forms. I really recommend that when you build these things, especially for people that you're providing them a service, it's a very good thing. It makes sure that they input the right information in the right place and don't mess around. And you can always, you know, um, take that information, dump it somewhere where they don't, where they can't even change it. So that's a good process for you. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please hit that subscribe button and keep watching. Happy to read your comments. Take care now. Bye-bye.